In this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of polygon modeling. All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a recap of level one. Now, in level one, we talked about box modeling. Now, box modeling is the process of starting out with a large primitive, so something like a box or a cylinder, okay, or any primitive that you see here in your standard primitives, and using that as, a, as the largest form of your model. So just like we did in level one, we had created a dumpster. So we started out with a box and we converted that to an edible poly and we shaped that to create the largest form of the dumpster itself. And then from there, we started to add segments to create the smaller forms and we would use different tools to pull those forms out like the extrude tool and the inset tool. Uh, and we went through lots and lots of tools um, to create that dumpster. Now, here we're talking about polygon modeling and you might be wondering what the difference is exactly. Well polygon modeling is going to give you the same result as it would with box modeling. It's just a different technique, a different way of working. So with polygon modeling uh, what we can do is we'll start out with a few polygons on the screen and we'll start to shape those in such a way um, that will create the details that we want. So this becomes a little bit more focused on the details of a model rather than the um, overall forms of the model. So we're going to start working a little bit smaller than what we did before. So with polygon modeling, the main thing that I want you to take away is it allows you to create an, an explicit edge flow to create the specific details that you want. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with creating our backpack. So I'm going to hit Alt W in the perspective view here to go full screen and then I'm going to hit F to go to my front view and to get started here we're going to just create a single plane so go to your standard primitives under your geometry and under the create panel and we're going to create a very small polygon okay and try to make it as square as possible and then in our link segments you want to make sure this is set to one by one I believe by default it might be set to four by four and we want to start out with just a single polygon. So now that we have this set, let's go ahead and right click on that object and we're going to convert it to Edible Poly. So now let's go to Edge Mode and let's select this bottom polygon here, or bottom edge, and then I'm going to hold down Shift with my Move Tool activated and we're going to hold down Shift and move that along the X and Y directions. And you'll notice if I hit G on the keyboard to start off with my grid, you'll notice that it's created another polygon that's extruded off that edge that I had previously. This is called the edge extrusion method. Now whenever using edge extrusion, what we're doing is we're creating a set of polygons that will follow along a specific edge flow of the model itself. So what we're building right now is going to be the top flap of our backpack. So to get started with this, whenever we start extruding these edges, if I just follow along with this line and I just start to trace that out, everything's going to look great up to a point because now once I start to um, use edge extrusion to this point, it starts to flatten out and we lose our polygons. So what has happened exactly? Well, if I go to vertex mode, you'll notice that as we are extruding these, the, the vertices are staying straight across from one another. And what they need to do is they need to point in the direction in which they're flowing. So in this case, uh, what I would want to do is I would want to take this vertex and I'd pull that down just a little bit. So it's kind of pointing off in the direction that it's turning. And then I'm going to pull this down. Okay, and I'm just trying to keep these edges parallel uh, to one another as they flow into the next polygon. So they're kind of giving us a hint on which direction the polygon should be turning. I'm going to take this vertex and let me pull that down. Let me grab this one and we'll pull that down. You'll see that these begin to reappear. And now we have the polygons that we need for our flap. Okay, so we've got this started. Now you might be asking, why create models this way? we learned how to use the box modeling method and with box modeling all the lines were very very straight uh, we didn't get into any curved shapes or anything like that we just made straight cuts using the slice tool using the connect tool so 
with something like this it's a little more organic why would we want to use these edge loops we could probably easily create a backpack using those box modeling methods so why use this well there could be a couple of different reasons uh, first and foremost we're trying to get a very specific detail in the model itself so if I were to come in and I start to uh, use my edge mode and I start to pull these around uh, I could start to create a very specific shape that I want out of this backpack. So I start blocking out these polygons. And uh, it's going to allow me to get a very specific look and get the specific details that I want. So let's say that I wanted a crease right here along that edge okay, to separate um, the flap. So maybe along the flap there's a border, which is what we're actually creating right here. So I would need to create polygons that would flow in that direction. Um, another reason that we might want to uh, create edge flow like this is um, maybe we're taking this specific model into something like ZBrush or Mudbox. With ZBrush and Mudbox, what that does is that allows us to sculpt very high detail on models. And starting out with a model in 3ds Max or Maya is a great way to create what's called a base mesh. Now a base mesh must be made of quads um, for it to subdivide correctly inside of ZBrush or um, Maya, or I'm sorry, Mudbox. And the reason that we want to make sure that everything is set to uh, quads is we want to make sure that um, you know everything subdivides so what's going to happen here is if we subdivide this in ZBrush or Mudbox it's going to split this one polygon into a four by four so it's going to split it into four polygons uh, and then if we were to subdivide it again it's going to split those four polygons into 16 polygons and then those 16 into 64 polygons okay and it's going to continue uh, to do that as we continue to subdivide and it creates very smooth results now with these edge flows in this place what it allows me to do is it allows me to sculpt detail um, along a specific pattern so if my edge flow was not there we might get some tearing in our sculpt and we wouldn't be able to create the specific detail that we want in ZBrush so that's another reason that we would want to use this so now that I've talked about why we would want to use polygon modeling um, techniques um, like this and create these edge flows um, let's go ahead and build out the rest of the border of our backpack here so we've got this front part and now what I'm building is just the border that goes around the flap so it's going to be very round so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and let's continue around the top and then we're going to um, start creating those flaps so as we come through we're going to um, take these polygons or these vertices and we're going to start to turn those in the direction that the uh, model should be flowing. Okay, so we're just going to take these and we'll take that. Now this does take a little bit of practice and I, I'm going to admit I've had quite a bit of practice using polygon modeling techniques and getting uh, trying to figure out exactly which way those vertices should turn um, does take just a little bit of practice okay but more often than not whichever way it's turning you just want to uh, try and keep the thickness from the polygons so if you need to move it around and uh, move those vertices just to get them to turn to create the same thickness uh, between the polygons that's usually a pretty good guideline alright so now that we've created um, our flap we want to give it some thickness so we want to make this a little more round so a way that I can do this is by adding a segment right through the middle so to add a segment we've already seen one way we could select this edge right here and select ring and then use connect okay and that will create a single segment in there and then what I can do is I can take that segment and I can pull it out in the Y now I don't want to pull that whole line there so I'm only going to select these lines right here and I'll pull those out and then I'll take the rest here on the top and I'm going to pull those up in the Z okay and that begins to uh, that begins to round that out now I'm going to take this one vertex and kind of 
try to relax that in between. Might want to take this one too. And this is the same thing. So if you go to your left view by hitting L on the keyboard, and uh, sometimes the left view doesn't exactly want to cooperate. Um, so let's try this one more time here. I'm going to hit V and go to left view. And it's not going to that view. I'm not really sure why the viewport wants to do this. Um, a way to get around this is by going into uh, the view cube. And normally I like to have that turned off, but it looks like we're going to need to have it on. So to bring that up, let's go to views, viewport configuration, view cube, and then show the view cube. Let's hit apply and OK, and you can see how the view cube is off here. Um, let's go to our front, and then I'm going to switch over here, and that should take me to my left view there. All right, so here in the left view, whenever you have these vertices, you want to make sure that those turn and you have that same thickness all the way around. So whenever you start learning this polygon modeling technique and this method, um, you're going to begin obsessing over the, um, the overall topology, uh, the way things are, how even the polygons are, and that's going to be a really great thing and very crucial for you as a modeler. Now with this one uh, loop selected here. Let's go ahead and chamfer this. And by chamfering this, we're going to split that into two, and that's going to round it out even more. So I'm going to take this up to a value of about six. Yours might be a little bit different than mine, but you kind of want to just split that and give it yourself a pretty good um, loop there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, back to edge mode, and let's select this loop right here. And I'm only going to select um, this part right here across the top. So let's hold down shift and drag that straight down. And then let's take the uh, remaining loops. Okay, And you can just double click on that and then hold down alt and deselect. And then I'm going to hold down shift and drag those out to the left here. And then I'm going to go to vertex mode by hitting one. I'm going to right click and go to target weld and weld these two points right here. And then again in the left view just hitting L on the keyboard we're going to readjust that topology. So we're going to move those around, try to keep that same thickness all the way through there. So there we have that, and we want to do the same thing uh, right in here. Now with this part, we can leave it exactly the way it is, because here what we want is we want the flap to actually um, come right into this point here. So I'm going to leave that just the way it is. So uh, from this point, let me take this edge one more time and let's extrude it again. Okay, so I'm going to extrude that straight down. There we go. And then I'm going to push it into the Y. And then I'm going to take these edges right here and I'm going to push those in the X. So we kind of get this rounded look all the way through our object. And then let's go to our left view hitting L on the keyboard. I'm going to take this vertex and just pull it back here. And then we're going to take this edge, let's hold down Alt, deselect those there. Let's hold down Shift and drag that back in the X. Okay. And then we're also going to push that over in the Y. Now before we do that, let's deselect a couple of these um, segments. So like these right here. Um, let's just take these right here and let's push those over in the X. And then I'm also going to pull those down in the Z a little bit further. Okay, well, just take this one here. Pull that down to the Z. So I'm trying to create kind of a border underneath here. So let's go to vertex mode. Let's target weld this point to here. So that's all connected again. And then we can go to our left view. And we can start working on those vertices and trying to get those uh, matched up with the rest of its polygons. Okay. So we're going to take this edge and we're going to pull that in some, do the same thing here. And then we have all of these, which we're going to pull up. Okay, so you can see here we've got that rounded shape. Push that one in there. And I'm going to push that into the Y. And there we go. So now we've created this loop. And this loop was created using polygon modeling techniques. So more specifically using the edge extrusion technique. 
So once we have this border, now what we're going to do in our next lesson is we're going to block out the shape of the flap. And then we'll start filling in uh, the polygons um, as we go along. So I'm going to show you how to do that next.